All right, and we are going to have our youth staying with us this morning, our junior high and high school, because as we're in the fifth commandments, this one is a one that is definitely relevant to youth and parents alike. We are looking at the fifth commandment, which says this, honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God commanded you, that your days may be long, that it may go well with you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. So we looked at it last week, and there's kind of two sides to this coin. There's the parental side, and then there's the children's side. And last week, we looked at the parental side, and this week, we're going to look at the posture of what it looks like to be childlike in a healthy way. But I do want to reiterate something real quick about last week as we get into God's word and saw the basic one of the most important basic structures of society by God's design, by God's creation. We see right here in the fifth commandment, which was also affirmed from the very beginning. If we just think about creation and biology, there is a very simple structure that God has designed on purpose, which is parents are designed to lead their children. And that is a God-given privilege. It's a massive responsibility. And so last week was all about powerful parenting and what we can do as parents to pass on the goodness of God in the lives of our children. But we also saw last week is that there is a clear attack in our world right now, in our society, ultimately, I think, rooted in the enemy, in the devil, who wants to tear families apart. He wants to disconnect parents and children. And so we went into a various number of examples of that just so we can kind of heighten our, our spiritual radars, if you will, of those things to be able to, you know, see them, not get caught up in them. What does the Bible say that the enemy's tactics are? He's prowling around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Well, if you don't know that the lion is standing behind you with his teeth open about to bite, then you don't know that you're not going to get devoured. So part of our job as Christians is becoming aware of the different ways that the enemy is attempting to devour God's design in the world. And so I just want to give one example that that I was confronted with this week right here in this room when we had the privilege of of hosting the Menifee Interfaith Meeting and California State Assembly Member Kelly Ciarto, uh, who is our representative in this 67th District of California, was in this room and he was our keynote speaker and he came and, and he gave a legislative update among other things. And he shared some of his concerns about some of the laws that are on the table right here in California. And it was just very interesting that he shared this, among others, particular law right on the heels of what we talked about last week. So AB, Assembly Bill 1184, uh, has been approved uh, in the state of California, passed through the Assembly. Ha! Ah, this one is sponsored by none other than the... Incredible group of parents, uh, Planned Parenthood Affiliates of California. And here, listen to this language. This new law prohibits insurance companies from revealing to the policy holder, which would be the parents, the sensitive services, quote unquote sensitive services of anyone on their policy, read children, including minors. These sensitive services include abortion, sexual assault treatment, drug abuse, mental health treatment, cross-sex hormones, puberty blockers, and sex change operations. Minors can consent to all of these sensitive treatments after the age of 12 under certain conditions in the state of California. Okay. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) A deliberate attempt to keep parents in the dark about what is going on with their children. Just a further attempt to disconnect parents from their children. To give children the message, the not so subtle message anymore. You can't trust your parents. When you're going through any of these hard things, and, and you know, you're, you're 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, which are the hardest time of life, the most confusing times of life. And then you got hormones going, you know, that are not making it any easier. They're actually biologically and developmentally making it worse. It's going to be the most confusing time. So if you're in that age right now, just trust me. Like, 
you're going to look back on your life and you're going to be like, that time was horrible. I had no, I mean, who looks back on their junior, junior high years and you're like, man, I really peaked in junior high. Wasn't that awesome? No. You have no idea who you are. It's confusing. It's scary. It's different. There's so many pressures from all the different places. And all these things, these sensitive services are normal that you're going to be struggling with these things. Questions about drug abuse and mental health and, and puberty stuff and sexual assault and, and se- the potential of sex change operations and these kind of things. These are all things that are just absolutely normal at your age to be wrestling with. And the laws in California are saying to the young people, and your parents are not a safe solution. Yeah, yeah. But, but government, whoever, is. So that's just, we get, that's a law that was passed this year. I don't know if it also passed through the Senate and if it was signed, I don't know. But it passed through the assembly. So it's real. It's very real right now. But there's also so much hope in Jesus. Look at this. Last week, we looked at this Psalm 112, and this promise does not change no matter what laws are passed. Here it is, Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the one who reveres the Lord, who greatly delights in God's commandments. His offspring will be mighty in the land. I love that verse because it's a picture of shelter and protection. I don't have to fear what's going on out there as long as I'm doing it right in here. If I'm being faithful as a man of God, as my wife, as a woman of God, as parents of God, if I'm being faithful to revere the Lord, to delight in God's ways, to keep my connection with God strong, I do not have to fear what's going to happen to my kids. In fact, I have a promise from God that they're going to be giants in the land. And this is a challenge for us because as we see bad news out there, the the problems get bigger than God's promises. And we've got to do a good job of believing that promises from the Lord are greater than the problems in the world. Now, it doesn't mean we don't want to address problems in the world, but we've got to believe his promises are bigger than the world's problems. And so that's where, you know, I honestly look out right now, and I'm living in this. I believe this. I'm not scared for my three boys. Who I am scared for is is the kids out there who are like harassed and helpless, sheep without a shepherd, who don't have parents in their home who are willing to go to bat for them, who are delighting in the Lord, who are revering God, who are honoring God in their life, staying closely connected to him and being able to pass on the abundant life that God has. So we do have a mission. Because there's a lot of kids out there. There's a lot of young people out there who are harassed and helpless, hurting. And so there's mission for us to say how, how can we appropriately shine our light to where we build healthy relationships out in the world and show people that there is an abundant life in Jesus. So that was last week, but I just want to continue to reinforce to us the battle is real. Got to get that radar on. But the promises of God are always bigger than the problems that the devil can cause. All right, moving on. Back to Deuteronomy 5.16. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God commanded you that your days may be long and that it may go well with you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Children are designed by God to be blessed by their parents. It's God's beautiful design all over creation, reiterated here. This is the only one of the Ten Commandments that carries with it a direct promise of blessing. So that's interesting. All of the commandments carry promise of blessing. That's why they're there. (laughs) They're not about earning salvation. They're about the promise of blessing of walking life with God. What does it look like to walk in the abundant, blessed life as a child of God? So they all carry promise of blessing, but this one has a very specific promise. It's even reiterated, renewed, and repeated in the New Testament in Ephesians chapter 6, 1 to 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother in parentheses, this is the first commandment with a promise, and the promise is, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in 
the land. So it's a promise of like general prosperity. It's going to go well with you. Your life is going to go well when you learn how to posture your heart in a way that honors your parents. So this verse here in Ephesians is repeating God's design is good. There's a challenge for all of us to trust God. That if we will posture our hearts with humility to receive from our parents, God promises blessing. We will receive an abundance of goodness. It will go well with us in our life. And I'm very convinced that the reason why this is the one of ten commandments that has a very specific promise of blessing on it is because it relates so much to all of life. Being able to posture our hearts in a way that humbly receives goodness, that is exactly the same posture for us in God. There's a reason why Jesus says if you can't be like a child, you're not entering the kingdom of God. If you can't be childlike, if you think you don't need God, if you think you know better than God, if you think you can get a blessed life without God, God's like, okay, then do it. But you're not in the kingdom. It's not going to go well. If you posture your heart with child as a child, you enter the kingdom. It's not a coincidence that Jesus uses that parental language. So there's a, a spiritual parallel there with this call to honor our parents because of what it calls us to do in our hearts, there's a spiritual parallel that is, has to do with everything in the rest of life. How do we respond to other leaders in our life? How do we respond to our bosses? How do we respond to our elders? How do we respond to spiritual leaders? And ultimately, how do we respond to God? Because if we're critical and rebellious of our earthly parents, it's very, very, very easy to translate that into the rest of life. And then we're in a danger zone where Jesus says, you're not in the kingdom if you can't be childlike. So personally, that's part of why I, I think this commandment has that extra promise on it. Because it is, it is really about a foundational posture of our heart to live under the blessings of God in really all spheres of life. So let's look into this a little bit here. What does it look like to honor your parents? So it does not mean that you don't have your own brain. It does not mean you don't become your own person as you grow up into adulthood to have your own thoughts, to have your own gifts and passions. It doesn't mean that you don't have your own unique design that God has given you. It doesn't mean any of those things. What we'll see in God's word is really that God's design, God designed children to be blessed by their parents. And so the best way to honor your parents is to posture your heart to humbly receive the goodness that parents have to offer. We posture our hearts to humbly receive the good. We can see the enemy wants to do the opposite. The devil wants to incite children, whether it's through the laws and they're being taught this way, whether it's school, whether it's through what the teachers are saying about parents at school, whether it's through media, whether it's through music, cartoons, Disney shows I've seen it. I'm like, oh, really? That's how you're going to teach my kid to respond to me? Bye. You know, it's like, nah, it's not helpful. It's not helpful for them. Here's the thing. They miss out on the blessing. That's what God, the whole thing we got to see is God is not saying honor your parents because he wants to put you in this little oppressive box. He's saying, I want your soul to stay in a condition where it's able to receive blessing in all of life and ultimately from me. Because if we can't humbly posture ourselves in a way or humbly posture our hearts to receive good from our earthly parents, there's a good chance we're cut off from our heavenly father. The devil wants to incite children to a critical spirit that rebels against parents and against, and here's the thing, and against God's method and design of blessing children. Now let me pause for a second and say, there are rare but appropriate times to separate from parents. God does not, anyone, God does not condone, allow, or cause abuse to happen. 
It is not his heart whatsoever. If there's one thing that fires God up, it's the oppression of children. You see it all over, over God's word. That fires God up. That is not okay. And so there is very clear teaching. This is a whole other separate teaching, that I, I, but I got to mention it. Matthew 18, where God demonstrates, he gives people to, he gives all of us, all of God's people, he gives people permission to separate themselves from abusive and toxic situations. God does not want you to be abused. That is not true. If you believe it, it's a lie. No, you're his beloved child. What healthy parent would be okay with their child being abused? None. And so God gives us permission, Matthew 18, 15 to 20, where if someone is wronging you and they're not willing to repent and you confront them on it and they're still not willing to repent, Jesus says, get them out of your life. Treat them as a Gentile or a tax collector. That means you push them out into the space of people we do not have fellowship with. That's, hey, Jesus sets boundaries. So the Bible describes those clear boundaries that should be set if people, including parents, are not willing to operate with healthy attitudes and actions. So that's a side note. That can get, that can get challenging. That can get messy because no parent is perfect, and so that is not to be approached with a flippancy or a, just a quickness in any way. It is there in God's word. But we have to also be extra aware in our day and age, that the devil is trying to propagate an attitude on earth that quickly divides families. And where rebellion against parents is almost seen as like a rite of passage. You know, you're not like a real person yet until you've kind of rebelled. You've thrown off the chains of childhood parenting, of, from your home, from your parents. Wrapped in fluffy language of freedom, there are many destructive lies from the pit of hell that absolutely undermine God's design for our soul and rob people of the blessings that God wants to bestow upon his people through their parents and through having that childlike posture of humbly receiving in really almost anywhere you walk in life, especially with God. So that critical and rebellious spirit that our world holds up now is almost this, you know, cool rite of passage. I've shown myself to be strong. It may feel good in the moment, and, and, and that's where it gets messy because God gives us permission to set boundaries with unhealthy attitudes and actions, but he doesn't want it to take root in our heart in a way where we can't walk humbly, trusting that God has good blessings, from the elders, from the parents, from the leaders, from the bosses in our lives where we can still posture our hearts to humbly receive. And as you get into this, you, you can see why Jesus commanded his disciples or he taught them to pray in the Lord's Prayer about forgiveness on a daily basis. Forgive us. This is what Jesus taught. Father, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's a daily bread. There's a power in that where you're letting go of the right to punish and how it quickly turns into bitterness because that becomes a poisonous toxin in the soul. Now, again, this, is, this gets complicated a little bit because there's a difference between forgiveness and reconciliation. Forgiveness is your part. Reconciliation is theirs. If they've wronged you. If they haven't repented, you're not reconciled, and that's not your fault. And they still need to stay out there at a space where they can't hurt you. But in here, forgiveness is always God's answer. Because if you don't, you begin to carry a burden as the judge of the universe, meeting out judgment upon sinners, and that is a toxic, that becomes toxic. We're, we're not meant to handle that. That's what let, forgiveness literally means let go. And God says, let me handle it. I'm the only just judge in the universe that can handle this burden, and I'll, I'll, I'll give it out in the right way in the right time. You be free. Let go of that right to punish so that it doesn't take root and become a toxin. It makes you scared of everybody. It makes you kind of walk in alone, can't trust anybody, can't receive. And here we go. Now you're outside of that childlike posture that is willing to humbly receive. And what's the problem now? You are missing out on your blessings. 
Hebrews 12, 15 said it like this, see to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God or a blessing of God. That's a similar word. It's the same, it carries the same connotation. See to it no one obtained fails grace of God, the blessings of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. You know who gets defiled more than anyone else with a root of bitterness? You. If you've got it, you're the one getting defiled. And then you go and spill it on others, unintentionally most of the time. But that, that root of bitterness, when people have wronged you, they've let you down, they disappointed you, and maybe even in, in, in real and valid ways. But this forgiveness is the antidote to that toxin taking a root to where now bitterness takes root and it grows. And what happens, it says? It causes trouble. It doesn't say it causes blessing. It may feel like you're protecting yourself, but you're not going to be bringing blessing into your life. You're going to be causing trouble. You've got a toxin that's going to be poisonous, and it's going to defile you and others around you. Defile you, meaning make you unclean, going to mess you up. From what? That pure, childlike heart that receives blessing. So the antidote to that toxin is forgiveness. And all of this, it's, this is not saying that the parents are going to be perfect. The whole, all this is meant to say, no, none are. <laughs> none are. That's, what, that's not what God's command is about. That's not what this posture is about. They're going to make mistakes and they're going to mess up. But here's the deal. God has designed a structure deep wired into the soul where we will be most blessed when we can carry our heart with a posture that humbly receives. So here's a simple framework. So this is now, if you are still in the home and living with your parents and into adulthood, a simple framework is, can you humble yourself in a way where you look for the good and you're ready to receive it? A healthy heart posture says, God, give me eyes to see the good and help me receive it. Because the assumption is, no parents are perfect. And if we take on that kind of critical, rebellious, you know, attitude that the world is encouraging, we'll see all sorts of problems. Because guess what? Every parent has all sorts of problems. So God's like, yeah, that's not a spiritual gift that you see their imperfections. And be careful because you could get into a place that's toxic where you're missing out on all the good things they have to offer. So the posture before God is, God, help me see the good. This starts now and it goes all the way into adulthood. Help me see the good so that I can receive all of the blessings that you want to bestow on me through my parents. There's a similar principle in Matthew 10, 40 to 41. Very, very interesting. It says this. Jesus is talking and he says, whoever receives you receives me. Whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. So he's talking about, he's about to send his disciples out and they are representing him. And so there's this picture of whoever is, whoever receives them is receiving Jesus and whoever receives Jesus is receiving his heavenly father. But he goes on to say this, the one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person, because he's a righteous person, will receive a righteous person's reward. I think you could add in there. And the one who receives a parent, because he's a parent, will receive a parent's reward. It's this idea of God has created certain roles in our lives that if we don't see the goodness that a person has to offer, we're going to miss out on the blessings that God wants to bring to us through them. So this Jesus is giving the example of a prophet carries a certain type of blessing. A righteous person carries a certain type of blessing. So a prophet carries a certain type of blessing, a prophetic word. If God's given them a, a true and accurate prophetic word, then the blessing is they have heard from God. Good news for you that is going to encourage you, build you up, or comfort you, according to 1 Corinthians 
14, 1 to 3. The New Testament prophecy operates like that. It's always going to be good news that lifts you up, encourages you, or comforts you. So a person might have a prophetic word. Now, if you've postured your heart in a way that says, I don't like prophecy. I don't do prophetic words. Uh, they might be coming and, no, 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 I don't, I don't do that prophecy thing. Uh, why? Most likely, oh, I was hurt in the past. Okay. While that may be true, you are cutting yourself off from a potential blessing that God wants to give you through a prophetic word. And so this, this verse Jesus is saying is, if you've already decided that you're cutting yourself off, I don't receive words from prophets, then you are missing out on the blessings that prophetic words that God wants to do in your life. It's the same way with kind of the parents. If we've shut off our hearts and said, oh, I was hurt in the past, so I'm not going to hum- posture my heart in a way to humbly receive, you're missing out on the blessing. Or with a righteous person who maybe have a life worth emulating, there's a lot, and there's some wonderful people in this church. I say righteous people where they've been walking with God 20, 30, 40 years. Righteous, upright lives, and you see the blessings in their life and where we can learn from them, we can receive from them, we can see their lives as testimonies of what God wants to do when you walk upright with him. And so we can either say, man, I want to learn from them and humble ourselves in a way where we're ready or we're postured in our heart to receive and learn, or we're going to say, no, nope, I'm going to do it my own way. I'm going to do it my own way. I don't receive. And, and what are we doing? We're just cutting ourselves off from the blessings that that righteous person has to build into our life. It's the same exact principle in all of them. And that's, to me, why it's like this same truth that Jesus is getting at here about just a general posture in our hearts is the same truth about God's command in the fifth, you know, the fifth commandment of honoring your parents. It's about living a life where we lay down those walls of, of fear and we are willing to trust again even when we've been wronged or hurt. And again, this is not with people that are unrepentant and, and you need to be protected from. It's about are we willing to posture our hearts humbly to receive blessings from many different people in our life. God has blessings he wants to bestow upon each and every one of us through parents, through bosses, through leaders, through pastors, through mentors, through spiritual fathers and mothers. But if we don't have the posture that's ready to humbly receive it and knows like, hey, I'm posturing my heart childlike, ready to receive, then what does Jesus say? You just miss their blessing. You just miss their blessing. Miss the prophet's blessing. Miss the the righteous person's blessing. Miss that spiritual parent's blessing. You just miss it if your heart is not open, humble to receive. So I love the way this is a really, this is just a living out of Jesus' call to be childlike. That no matter how old we get, and even if we're not physically, you know, child, a child anymore, right along with Jesus' words, we're never too old to posture our hearts in a childlike way. No one's exempt of that. I mean, Jesus didn't say, posture your hearts as children to enter the kingdom of heaven and then stop that posture and become an adult who doesn't need to receive from anybody. He doesn't say that because you've never fully received all of the kingdom. How you receive more of the kingdom is through a childlike posture that's humbly ready to receive. And so I I just want to give that healthy challenge to all of us. What does it look like to intentionally posture our hearts to receive? To humbly receive. I mean, I'm 42 years old. I'm not a child anymore. I've got children of my own. One's an adult. He's almost 19. He's starting to lead his own adult life. You know, I lead a church, leader in some absolute, you know, I'm a leader in some various ways, but one of the absolutely most important things in my life, I can feel it. I can feel it. So if you trust me and my life in any way, let me tell you, this is testimony. I can feel it. One of the most powerful things I can do in my life to be blessed, to get closer to Jesus and to grow is to find ways and people that I can posture my heart intentionally with to humbly receive from them 
from them. I'm a leader, doesn't matter. I'm a pastor, doesn't matter. I lead such and such, doesn't matter. I've got grown kids, doesn't matter. I'm old, doesn't matter. I promise you, one of the most spiritually powerful things you can do forever is to trust Jesus and, 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 and work on having a childlike posture that humbly receives. And look for it. Where can I do that? Where can I find that? And, I, and thankfully, I'm blessed. My parents are in this church. They're both biologically my parents and they're spiritually my parents. I've been receiving from them th- from the beginning. But I'll, I'll tell you, there's still new ways that I'm learning at 42 years old on how to have that posture that, that, so, so that I get the blessing. And part of that is because as a kid, you know, maybe I'm the only one, but I was a little arrogant and, 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 you know, thought that I maybe knew things a little bit better than my parents or did things a little bit better. No one? Okay, just me. All right, fine. <laughs> fine. God crushes the proud and then lifts them up. So fine, I'm getting lifted up by God someday. But as, I, as I'm growing up, I'm still growing up, I'm noticing even though our personalities are different and, and our, the way God's wired us are different, there's so much to learn from that my parents do things personality-wise very different from me. But as I'm learning to posture my heart humbly and watch the fruit of their life, here we go, they are wildly successful in the kingdom. And so I'm finally getting to that age to say, well, my, God, God has wired me a certain way in my personality, but that doesn't mean I have to become their personality to walk in their blessing. What it means is they have a life of integrity and character and, and, and fruitfulness before God and ways of following God's word that I absolutely still am learning from. And the more I can posture my heart to receive from them, the more I'm going to get blessed. And God wants us to, to, to find those people. I was with a, a mentor this week. I meet every single week with, with a, a pastoral mentor. He lives in Ohio. There's pastors from around the country, about eight, eight nine of us that gather every week, Thursday morning at 10 a.m. To, to go on a video call. And we are intentionally there to receive, to be mentored, to be discipled, to learn, to grow. And, and here's the thing. Both with my parents that I'm talking about right now and with the mentors that I have in my life and the, and the, the spiritual fathers, mothers, grandmothers, there is a, a freedom when you can find those relationships, something so life-giving where you can let your guard down and receive that fills up the soul. That's, some, that's one of, in God's design, that's one of the best things about childhood is when kids have healthy parents who are connected to God and passing that on, and they feel no pressure. They feel free. They don't have the weight of the world and the cares of the world. Why? Because they feel safe and protected and provided for and loved and cared for, and there's something about the human soul that is meant to grow up that way, and when we don't, that's, that's dangerous, and that's, that's, that, that can be painful. It can be damaging. God wants to heal those things, but God's design is that when parents are connected to God, children would grow up mirroring this relationship with God, trusting exactly what Jesus says, do not fear God. It's, it, he's using the parental language, Luke 12, 32. Fear not, my, fu- my fear not, little flock. It's my fa- like like little little chicks, little hens. It's my father's good pleasure, my children, to give you his kingdom. So you don't have to fear the future. Don't worry about tomorrow. Why? Because there's that parental protection, provision, and care that God wants to be. And there's something really freeing and healing to the soul when you can get in that posture with God. It brings life. It, it lifts burdens. You, you finally feel what it's like even as an adult to walk in a light and easy yoke where God does the heavy lifting that's supposed to start in childhood so that as you grow up through your parents, you go, oh, I know what Jesus is talking about. I've already felt that. I've already lived that through my parents. Yeah, okay. I believe that that's real. I believe that's who God is. And if that's not the case, then it takes some more time. And God will heal that, but that's, it's the same picture. But it is, my point was, wow, to find those kind of people in real life where you can trust, there is a letting your guard down and letting someone fight for you, 
letting someone carry a burden for you, letting someone offer provision and protection for you. That is absolutely this, this beautiful childlike posture that relieves burdens, helps you walk in a light and easy yoke, refreshes you to go back out and fight the good fight and carry the things you're supposed to carry. But if you don't have anybody in your life where you're ever able to let it go, let, it, let the guard down and give someone that burden, let them carry it for you, then you're going to be carried and all it's going to be too heavy. You're going to crash and burn. It's going to happen. It's just going to happen. And so it's like I go into these meetings on Thursdays and I just can't wait to be able to posture my heart in a way where I am not in charge. I'm not leading. I don't have to have it all together. I come with, with frustrations, problems, questions, and I get to receive. But let me say one other thing on that. It's also critically important that I posture my heart in a humble way to receive and I demonstrate that to the group because watch out, man, that the enemy wants that critical spirit and rebellion against parents or leaders. For some reason, that spreads like wildfire. And so even this week, I'll just give the example of how to try to live this out. Our leader asked us for critical feedback. He brought a, a, a text of God's word and then an application in a leadership context. And he said, hey, here's what I'm doing right now in my context, my sphere of influence. What do you all think of this? And I'll be honest. I was like, mm, I'm, not really, I'm not really jiving with it. Like, I, you know, part of it. Like, I get the big picture of what you're saying, but there was part of the application of God's word in the context where I'm like, man, I, I'm, honestly, I'm uncomfortable with that. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's the most powerful way. That's not how we would do it here. I know that. It's not how we do it here. And, and, but he's asking, literally, for feedback. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. You know, it's like, I don't, you know, I, I don't agree. But here's, here, here's, I'm just trying to live it out, be honest. So I said, he's asking for it. But I said, and this is uncomfortable. Hey, you're at, you know, he's like, come on, give me the feedback. Give it. I'm a little uncomfortable. He's like, come on, give it to me. I know it. So, but I said, hey, you know what? Before I say this, I want, I want you to know and I want the group to know. Like, I am here and I follow with great joy, I follow your leadership, and I submit to your leadership, and you have been nothing but an incredible blessing in my life to learn from you, and, and I just said that, and then went into, so as I say this, you know, know that that's my heart, and I'm here to learn as well, but from what you shared, here, here's my take on what you shared, and, and I'm just being honest with how to live this out in a way of where you're humbly ready to receive, you're, but you still have your own brain and your own thoughts, but you're, you're not, you're very careful. In that humility, childlike humility before God and before your parent or your spiritual leader or whoever it may be, your boss, there's a way to share different thoughts, difference of opinion, differences of opinions without being critical that incites rebellion. And we got to be careful because the enemy is lurking right there. And for whatever reason, that critical spirit that incites just that rebellion against leaders is one of the easiest things to, to propagate in our hearts. Most likely because, you know, we've been hurt and we want to protect ourselves. So I just felt led to, to give that example. But coming back to it, here's my challenge and we'll close and we're going we're gonna to sing one more song as a declaration. There is such great joy and blessing in posturing our hearts to receive with a childlike humility. I'll give one more example. So we got Dr. Charles over there, Dr. Charles Renault, awesome man of God. He, he, if you don't know him, yeah, incredible guy. He's been a pastor. He's been an associate pastor, married for like 50 years. Like just he's been an educator. He's got his doctorate, missionary, been to Panama, came home with a beautiful wife from Panama. So that's a success, <laughs> you know. If, you, if, you knew, if any of you are looking for that blessing in your life, you know, like, you know, learn from righteous men. Uh, but so much to receive from him. So even though he calls me pastor and he's in our church and, you know, he, I know he comes here with a humble heart to learn. So that's an amazing example. He comes here to learn. He comes here to grow. He's, you're never too old to grow and learn. But when I'm with him and it's his turn to pray for me and he's asked for me to pray for him and I pray and I can tell he's receiving it. But let me just tell you this. So I'm example, when he prays, something happened in my soul. It's not just, okay, cool, Charles praying. No, it's bam, come on, childlike right now, receive it. There's something in the spirit that just, it kind of, I believe, it like opens the, the power, the, like the portal of heaven 
to receive. I want to receive my blessing. So what am I going to do? When he's praying for me, check my heart right now. Am I postured in a childlike humility ready to receive the blessings from this man? Because if I'm not, I'm cutting off my blessings and I'm going to miss out on the blessings he has to offer. And so it's right there. It's just, it's, this is the work we can do. We can do this work with our own parents. We can do this work with spiritual parents. We can do this work with people that we look up to, mentors, leaders, bosses. There is something that God wants to do in our lives to bless us. It honors God for us to do, to get into this commandment and say, God, teach me how, with appropriate boundaries and not opening myself up to toxic people, Teach me how to love, love, posturing my heart, childlike, humble, ready to receive because I know you have abundant blessings you want to pour into my life through that posture and I'll be missing them if I don't have it. So let's, let's pray on that. I'm going to have my wife come up and we're going we're gonna to have the band come up for one final song. I'm going to have her share her heart, her, a word here and then we'll close with a declaration over our lives, our families in this world uh, with a song. All right. Um, I wanted to add a very personal testimony about what Casey is talking about um, because I feel like it applies to every single relationship. And I also feel like, um, the, where's the verse about prophecy? Do not despise prophecy. But, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. First Thessalonians 5. First Thessalonians 5. <laughs> okay, yeah. It's Don't basically, prophecy, test everything, hold, yeah, fast. hold fast what is good. So it's do not despise prophecy, test everything, and hold fast to what is good. So what do we have there? We have a lens of the Holy Spirit, and we have grace because humans aren't perfect. So there's grace that not everything that's going to be coming from that person is going to be maybe from the Holy Spirit for your life, right? But in that honor and posture of receiving, you, can, you still have the Holy Spirit and you can hold fast to what is good. And there are certain things that you won't necessarily hold on to. But there's an honor and there's a putting off and not partnering with a critical spirit. Because when you're just looking, you can just look at what's wrong with the person. Not through a grace lens, through the, critical, through the lens of a critical spirit. You can look at what's wrong and what you're not getting or what, not, what they're not doing. And you completely miss out on the blessing. You completely miss out on the living stream of living water that God has pouring through their life and you're cutting it off because they're not perfect. Jesus died because we're not perfect. (laughs) And I felt like God showed me that with my mom who is not more spiritually mature than me. And many of us have parents who are not more spiritually mature than us. But honor, I felt like the Lord showed me. There's something about Philippians 4, focusing on the good. Focusing on what is good and praiseworthy and lovely. Looking at all the love and all of the goodness. Not the place where maybe they don't know as much as you in certain areas. Or maybe they're a little childlike. But there is an honor and a blessing. Now, I'm not saying you overlook, like Casey was talking about, the areas that you need to talk about. That's 100% biblical. Look up his old sermons. Uh, Is it safe communication? Yeah, that's about reconciliation. And that is so important so that you don't give the enemy a stronghold in a relationship and cut off all the goodness that the Holy Spirit wants. That keeping things swept under the rug will defile your life and cut off the goodness and glory of God in ways that you can't even imagine. Go after that just like you would go after the devil because that's what it is. Anyways, but what the Lord spoke to me was that honor was a bridge. So could I look at my mom in many situations and think, oh, well, I would do things differently. Oh, well, I actually know a little bit more than you in that area. I could. And I'd be partnering with a critical spirit 
and I wouldn't be receiving. I mean, it's not like things don't go through your mind because I help her with things, you know, like we're both aware of it. It's not like a pretend thing. But there's a posture of love. There's a posture of receiving. And I felt like the Lord told me honor is a bridge from me to her. Where through on that bridge, it's like a highway to receive heaven's blessing, the goodness of heaven that is flowing from our parents and from our leaders who are imperfect people, who are imperfect people, but there is grace and there is, get this, there is an anointing from God through your parents, through that parental relationship to pour out goodness on your life through you and to you regardless of whether they're perfect because no one's perfect and regardless of whether they're completely ahead of you in every way. So I just wanted to throw that out there. It's, it's the honor is a bridge. It's focusing on the good and it's like you become, you become instead of partnering with a critical spirit and negativity, you're focusing on the good. You are blessing them. You're, you're thanking them. You're telling them how much you love them. And then you are also receiving like a magnet the goodness of heaven pouring through their life from God that is meant to just smack onto you and change your life forever for good. There is an anointing on that. Sing a new song.